give you an overview of how to implement a growth strategy using Capital IQ to screen for stocks. But first, let's step back and look at the big picture. If you're going to implement an investment strategy, you often have a choice of whether you want to do a quantitative strategy, also called a quant strategy, or do a fundamental strategy. That quant strategy tends to be much more mechanical. It tends to be based on uh, an analysis of data and a strategy that's performed historically through back testing. And you're hoping that that will continue to go forward. The analyst doesn't have as much discretion in implementing this type of strategy. But my focus here is on a fundamental strategy. And a fundamental strategy involves a lot more discretion and analysis on the part of an equity analyst. It often starts with a financial statement. And it involves that application of analyst judgment and discretion because the financial markets and the economy are ever-changing and require um, you know, the analyst's opinion and analysis about why this time might be different. To implement a fundamental strategy, what the analyst has to do is understand a company's profitability, financial position, the cash flows associated with the company. What are their gross prospects? What is the competitive a uh, unique advantage of the company. So in particular, I'd like to focus on the growth strategy. And if you're going to implement this uh, fundamental strategy in equities, you have this choice between whether it's a value strategy or a growth strategy. Let's focus on the growth strategy. Usually this is identifying companies that are expected to grow faster than the industry or their overall market average. But what are you talking about the growth of? Well, it can be cash flows, revenues, earnings. There are all these different financial variables that you can measure the growth of. It can be historical growth, expected future growth. There are a lot of possibilities. It also often involves momentum in terms of buying those stocks that have done well in the past and have this price momentum that uh, is associated with future outperformance. One subset of this growth style investing is GARP which is growth at a reasonable price. This tries to identify above average growth with reasonable market valuations. And it's often using the price to earnings to growth ratio, or called, it's also called the PEG ratio. So let's take a look at how to do this in Capital IQ. I've used a web browser to access the Capital IQ website. And what I'm gonna do is go to stock screening and pull up a stock screen that I saved that's got some basic screens in it to just filter out uh, a lot of the securities that I'm not interested in. And this screen's on market capitalization. It uh, has a criteria for exchanges and uh, equity securities. I'm just trying to focus on those common stocks. So we've got this basic criteria listed. What do we do now as we want to add more things to it to implement a growth strategy? Well, what you can do is you can search through the criteria for growth and you can see that there are lots of possibilities out there to add. You can look at estimated annual growth and let's click on this one. This is over a two year period. You would want it to be greater than say 10%. And I'm just making up these numbers. This is something that you'd want to, you know, actually play around with uh, in order to find the right approach to getting down to a reasonable number. So you can see this cuts it down by about 75%. And if you wanted to do additional ones, you can go back to growth. You can see there are lots of possibilities, whether it's uh, continuing operations, net income, annual revenue, um, what is the long-term EPS growth rate that is expected by analyst. Um, long-term tends to be three to five years, so let's add in a growth rate of over 5%. This reduces it down to 932. So, you know, maybe that's not enough. I mean, maybe we want to actually go with 10%. So that gets it down a lot more. What if we wanted 20%? So you can play around a lot with these numbers to get down to a reasonable number of stocks. So uh, it basically ends up with 183 firms here. If you wanted to do 
peg ratio, that's possible as well. And so I'm going to search here for peg. And you can see that this is the price to earnings ratio divided by the growth rate. So you want a peg as low as possible. The numerator here is the PE ratio. That's the price you pay for a dollar's worth of corporate earnings. You want that to be low. You want the denominator to be high, and that's this G, this growth rate. So you would really prefer to have these that um, are actually low. So let's find one that is, say, less than two. I'm not sure how many we're going to get associated with that because we've already identified a lot of uh, a lot of growth stocks. So it's hard to believe there would be many of these. So it gets down to 157, which is uh, which is actually surprising. I'm going to put it at 1.5. That should knock it down quite a bit. Now we've got 136 stocks. So another thing that you can do is take a look at return. You know, what was the 30-day return, the 90-day return on this particular stock? You could look, with, look at those with a lot of positive momentum. I'm going to put in 5% here. I'm going to add it. Probably not going to be many here. So capital IQ is working, and it's going to ultimately reduce it down to, wait, it's coming. Hundred and thirty six. Well that's that's actually quite quite interesting um, that it doesn't reduce it down at all. I mean what if we put in ten percent? And again, putting in one zero, it's in percent here. So um, that is actually uh, you don't have to enter in point one for ten percent. So it takes a while sometimes, but it's working and it's getting it down pretty low. So you know, you can continue adding these things. You can look at growth in a lot of different ways. One of the things I encourage you to do is go to estimates because this is basically showing you what's going to happen in the future or what analysts expect to happen in the future. And they've got a lot of estimated growth rates right here under estimates, whether it's cash flow, dividends per share, uh, sequential quarterly dividends per share growth, capital expenditure growth, you have a lot of possibilities here. Of course, revenue is in there as well. So have fun playing around this. You know, ultimately, when you figure uh, out a reasonable list of criteria, you're going to want to show the results and export them to Excel by clicking on the Excel icon. So good luck in, uh, in finding an undervalued security.